Hello. How long have we been going? It's just okay. okay. My name's Christine. I'm Kat. I'm Jesse. And we're Book Explosion. Welcome to Dear Book Explosion, our I don't know what installment. Uh you know, fine. Our ninth installment. Uh, today we're going to be talking about book festivals, conventions in general, tips, the pros and cons. Uh, if you have any questions about any book conventions, we're going to be talking about not just book conventions, all conventions. We're going to be talking about our favorite convention experiences, our worst convention experiences, mishaps, all sorts of things. We're also giving away two tickets to BookCon at the end of this live show. So if you are here, you can win them. <laughs> and we will do something to, you know, fun to give them away, interactive with the chat toward the end of the hour. Now, just a little bit of housekeeping before we get into our convention talk. Our book of the month this month is Chain of Gold by Cassandra Clare. It is the first book in a new trilogy that takes place after the Infernal Devices. You don't have to read anything, Shadowhunter, to read this, but you really, really, really should read the Infernal Devices before you read this, because it'll spoil all the good, big, giant plot points. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then our April book of the month is The June Boys by Court Stevens. Really excited about this. It sounds very true crime. It's about a, um, oh my gosh, what is it called when you kidnap people? A kidnapper? Yeah. <laughs> it's about um, a serial kidnapper who kidnaps a certain amount of boys every year and he will keep them for a full year and one month before releasing them back into society and he's been doing this for years now without being caught and someone i think the cousin of our lead gets abducted and she gets involved trying to solve this case and someone gets murdered this time and that hasn't happened before and it's a whole thing she tries to yeah she it feels very um Gosh, I can't remember anyone's name from Riverdale, but you know, Jughead and the main girl with the blonde hair, how they like solve Betty. Betty. <laughs> Betty, how they solve mysteries together. It feels like that because she like enlists her boyfriend to help her solve the case. Cool. So yeah, we're we're doing um Chain of Gold this month. Our live show is when is it? Soon, the 28th, 29th? 28th, yeah. 28th. Um, and then our June Boys live show, um, we have it currently scheduled for May 3rd, which is a Sunday, a little bit different from our usual Saturday. Um, but yeah, and we'll be talking more about all this stuff in the coming weeks. Yeah. Um, okay. So let's kick things off by talking about uh, your favorite conference you've ever been to. If anyone in the chat has anything to say about their favorite conferences, Feel free. We want to talk to you too, obviously. That's why we do a live show. So, and if you have any questions about any cons that we talk about or any cons in general, shout them out, okay? Jesse, tell us what's your favorite con experience then? Oh, I have a special place in my heart for the first VidCon I ever went to. I mean, it's where we all first met. It was just like a really good time too. Like just a good time, like forming friendships, meeting other booktubers and like learning more about like the platform of YouTube. Um, so I would probably say VidCon 2013, is that what that was? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was my favorite. Oh, I think. long ago, wow. Yeah, yeah. Ago. What about you, Kitten? Ah, uh, I mean, there are so many that have been so good. Yeah. Um, like the, the early VidCons were fantastic. Um, a lot of y'all West and y'all fest because those are kind of casual and nice. Mm -hmm. But I think my favorite one was um, what was it called? NerdCon, the one that um, Christine, you and I went to in Boston. Yeah. Um, the one that I wasn't at was your favorite. <laughs> I see how it is. <laughs> you, you should have gone. <laughs> I think one of yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Oh. So, um, oh my God! <laughs> Jesse kicked me out of the room. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh my, God, dude. my favorite convention is any where Jesse has no power. <laughs> oh. I 
think one of the the things that separates NerdCon, it's like my favorite actual conference, like the actual stuff in the conference was really great. But my favorite maybe like con experience like was is different from that. Like it's the people that are there make a con much better than the actual maybe con is sometimes. Right. And like the actual con that had the best like content. <laughs> Um, one of the best contests was NerdCon because it was so nostalgic. And like, I mean, we've been watching the Vlogbrothers for so long and it was so cool to see them live and in action and then like see all these old YouTubers that were like the first vloggers they ever watched in action. Yeah. And then Kat and I did this really fun debate game that like <laughs> didn't go over as well the second time we tried it at a explosion thing, but it was such a close quarters when we did it the first time that it really worked super well and it was really fun um we held like a booktube meetup i think was that what it is oh, one. yeah yeah because um, it was a small convention too mm -hmm. like it had a lot of the like energy and heart of old school vidcon um but it was it came at a point when like vidcon has had kind of been getting like not as great lately and been kind of like blowing up too big that it was just like pure chaos mm -hmm. um and this was again like this the, like the community this felt like a nerd fighter thing and it was just beautiful yeah it was like all nerd fighteria um well uh, my favorite con experience it's so hard to choose like i think the content was nerd con but like the con experience like the first big con with book two in 2013 was amazing 2014 was amazing. The first uh, BEA with BookTube in 2014 was so much fun. It was just like the, like, very, the, first book con, the very first book con that we oh, were the very first book con. Yeah, I was thinking BEA, but like that was the very first book con too. And like that was when we were trying to go to the meetup, and Kat and I just got like swarmed, and then everyone was blaming us for this, and we're like, we didn't set this up in the middle of the hall, like. <laughs> Uh, um, it, but it was just, that was like very surreal. That that book yeah, on so wild. Um, it's we've had so many. Oh, and like my, I really loved the year, the Comic Con year when Jesse, when you came out for Comic Con, and like yeah. there was the Because You Live to Hate Me panel was really cool, and like I got to be Dolores, and I had so much fun being Dolores Abernathy from Westworld. <laughs> Um, um, 2014 VidCon was also really like rewarding because we had fought for a panel yeah. and ended up getting it. Yes. We had like sort of this like big movement for BookTube to like, or for VidCon to like let us have a panel about BookTube and like they gave in and let us have a panel and that was super exciting. Yeah, yeah, that that felt really cool too. Um, because like we had this whole social media thing that was like BookTube at VidCon. Like we campaigned for a panel. And we finally got one. Yes. Um, and now there are no more BookTube panels anymore. <laughs> R.I.P. <laughs> yeah. It's a run. <laughs> um, and then, like, 2015 was really cool because uh, BookTube wasn't considered a real panel, like, where we were invited to VidCon <laughs> the first year. We just were, like, a community pass thing, I think. And then, like, we got invited the next year. So a bunch of BookTubers had room, so a lot of us could be in the rooms and not have to like uh find hotels far away and you know right. all that yeah. which is really cool also uh, oh go ahead kitten oh i was gonna say another highlight of vidcon is that we do music videos almost every year those, those have always been really fun too yeah, yeah. really intense <laughs> <laughs> a lot, like I don't think some people realize how much effort and like pre-planning goes into those videos. Especially some of them where like you re you wrote a whole ass song and like. Right. Oh my God. I still like can't watch that. I need so I wish someone else sang it. I wish I didn't, wasn't encouraged to just like do it myself. <laughs> um, <It's funny. laughs> but anyway. My favorite is the La La Land one that we did, the final one. Like oh, I, oh I really like thought through all the shots, so we like on the on the spot, we knew exactly what we needed. And Jesse filmed it so good, so it was really nice to <laughs> <laughs> it just went so much better, like for editing. Yeah. Um. Anyway, uh, 
Okay. I also yeah. want to mention something. VidCon yeah. is also really fun because we have our book explosion meetups at Barnes and Noble. Those were always yeah. like so much fun. Yes, um, our cosplay meetups. Yes. Yeah, those are great. <laughs> those are great. And now it's like VidCon doesn't like BookTube and it's just like, it's really, no one wants to go out there for so much money when there's like no book to related content. Yeah. So sadness, sadness. <laughs> um, do we want to, okay, so Jessica says um, all the cons that she knows about are in the States and she lives in Alberta. Where do I figure out where to go? I would like just Google conventions or like comic book conventions in Canada. I mean, I feel like that's the most basic kind but like now comic book conventions have all sorts of different pop culture stuff happening at them. Um, but, or just like popular conventions in Canada, I'm sure there's some equivalent. Um, and there's always ones in, um, is Alberta on the West or the East side of Canada? Oh, oh, uh, she's near Toronto. Okay. never mind. So I was like, I know there's one like in Seattle, which isn't too far from Canada, but Toronto is on the East coast side. Hmm. Yeah. And like just... finding, ones in like there, there might not be any like huge big ones like it's not like a book con or a vid con level kind of thing um but there's definitely there's always small conventions and festivals like even in the states um there's like all, all festivals in texas festivals yeah in, smaller uh, ones everywhere. yeah smaller ones so there's definitely festivals and conventions that are, are near you it's just you got to do the, the research to find the little ones yeah, I just Googled it and there's uh, like a Comic Con type thing happening on April 4th in Alberta. So nice. Yeah, Google it. <laughs> and nothing gets canceled for Corona. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Stay um, healthy, my friends. <laughs> yeah, be careful. Uh, right now is like a weird time to be talking about this because yeah. like every con is up in the air until we kind of get a handle on what's going on with the health of the world. Yeah, like um, I I just saw earlier today that Y'all West is unfortunately canceled this year, which is disappointing. But like, it's a hard decision to make, but it's the right one to just like make sure everyone stays safe and healthy. So it's disappointing, but it's it's for the better. Yeah, I mean until there's some sort of I feel like some sort of solution to like, we can't keep spreading it. <laughs> um, Jessica also asked, has the con experience changed after writing again, but better? And the only con that I've gone to where this is, actually I've been to two, Never mind. Okay, I've been to Y'all Fest and BookCon since my book has come out. And BookCon was just like more crowded than usual because I had a signing. Um, and uh, an author like breakfast thing. And I just had more stuff to run around to. I mean, so it, it didn't change too much. It just got a little more busy. Y'all Fest was different being an author just because like an author gets two signings at Y'all Fest. Mm -hmm. And I was also on like an author panel. And I think the author panels are very different from the YouTube panels and that's what like makes everything feel really different. The you get so used to the same type of questions mm -hmm. and I've been in yeah, I've been on YouTube for 10 years. So I'm so comfortable and so confident in my answers to those questions. And then with all the author questions, I'm like, oh, oh I know what you know, like why is this so hard to answer? It's like I haven't answered it before and it's I, of course, I've been answering questions from you guys about my book for a long time, but it's different than the questions that like a moderator will ask about author and writing on a panel with authors. <laughs> right, for sure. Um, let's see here. Jesse, how are you so good at editing? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Actually, I have a question. Jesse, how many hours did that recent video? Seriously, take? I feel like I was dying. I need to know. I like, I'm pretty sure with like filming and editing, probably like three days in total of hours. I just, I'm pretty sure like, yeah. What I need to know is, did you like, map out your shelves before putting the books on there? Cause like you put it like in every other book kind of, how did you do it? Like this is yeah. like forever. So I organized, <laughs> here's my secret, it's filling my secret. <laughs> I organized my bookshelf and then I filmed myself just taking off the books and then I reversed the footage. Okay. And then you chop it and it just, yeah. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> so no. that's the secret. No. It, took, the bag. you didn't have to like think about what you wanted it to look yeah. like. 
beforehand, which is like a hard thing to do when you already have so much setup. Right. Um, I just want you to make videos like that for every song. Like, I feel like every music video should be replaced with like a music video, but to just like book books being rearranged. Like, yeah. petition for that to happen. <laughs> Um, okay, getting back to the subject of cons, <laughs> let's talk about what is the worst con that you've ever been to? Mm -hmm. I'm trying to like remember bad cons. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I mean. I have one, but I don't, I can't say it. <laughs> I have one too, and I don't think I can say it. <laughs> <laughs> I would just say like this specific con that I went to, just not a lot happened. It was a lot of sitting and like not, there wasn't a lot of like one-on-one -on -one interactions except for like outside of panels. Like it was just like panels back to back to back. And like that's, yeah, that, that to me is just like, I, I like, I like events where it's like, community building type stuff where you're like getting to know other people and like having that chance to like socialize but also like going to panels and like getting you know like having a variety of things to do at a conference and this one was just like panels 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 and I didn't enjoy it that much so I feel like it's rough um because I think the the most disorganized con that I feel like I've been to was like the first book con because no one knew what to expect for that yeah. and um there were so many people there like I'm sure no one was expecting such a surge and like they hadn't ever done it before so the way that people were supposed to move throughout the floor was kind of a mess because there were too many people so it was like comic con almost in this condensed section of the floor where book con was um, but they've really, they've got it now. Like they've yeah. got it down. It's great. Um, mm -hmm. Even the year afterward, they had to open up the whole floor. So it wasn't a problem at all. Yeah. yeah. I, th I, think, I think the problem with that was they just weren't prepared for how many people were going to be interested yeah. and how, how many people were going to come to it. Because they're like, oh, it's a, it's a book festival. Like yeah. how many people will we get? And it was like Comic-Con. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was crazy. And it, it is crazy, so be prepared. But like now they have much more space open in the Javits Center for BookCon, and it's much right. more organized and it runs super smooth. Um, uh, okay. I think my least favorite con was, it was probably like the, the last VidCon that I went to. And mm -hmm. just, it wasn't that it was awful or anything, it's just it was so different from the early VidCons that I loved so much. And I just felt like there wasn't, I wasn't getting a lot out of it anymore because like VidCon kind of shifted their focus. So it was less about community and more about like mm -hmm. fans to meet the biggest creators on YouTube. Mm -hmm. um, and I liked the smaller, more intimate, like the community aspect. So the last VidCon I went to, I was just like, this isn't for me. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the best thing about these conferences was like, they allowed us to form these friendships with people who are so passionate about the things that we are also passionate about so vidcon is where we met people who like did youtube irl and it really changes things once you meet someone IRL. you can have internet friends but once you meet in person it kind of solidifies that friendship and it feels more grounded um and like you like you know now that this person is a person you're friends with and on that line you're always like are we actual friends sometimes you know so it, it really, like, we all met at VidCon, like, and that's, you know, because we kind of knew each other on the internet. Mm -hmm. um, and I feel like so many people meet bookish friends and stuff at BookCon, like, online, and that's that's the best. When you're, like, online, you start talking to somebody, and you find out you have so much in common, and it's like, well, wow, I mean, like, everyone here might also be able to, you might be able to click with, because everyone's really passionate about books. Mm -hmm. um, and that was what so was so great about VidCon 24, 2013 because before that I had gone and like I didn't know any booktubers there there so there was no one that I like immediately clicked with they, they were all from like different areas of YouTube and didn't really get booktube <laughs> and like I was never really accepted as like a comedy YouTuber I mean like the yeah. first anyone ever wanted to peg me as like a beauty person even though like I would constantly be like that's not what I do at all and there's this lack of respect 
for people who like from women, obviously, yeah. <laughs> it's just like ingrained. And um, so like, I would always feel the need to like have to prove myself as like a human being because I was dismissed because I was a blonde girl. Like I like that I wasn't making quality content. That frustrates me too so much. Like, yeah. uh, especially, like that was, that's another thing about like the sort of just like in general VidCon atmosphere. It wasn't about VidCon. It's like the general YouTube attitude where, mm -hmm. um, again, like what Christine was saying, like a lot of um, male creators will assume that any female creator is a, a beauty guru, but and it's not like there's anything wrong with that assumption, except that it's like a dismissal. It's like, oh, they're a beauty guru. And it's like, first of all, there's nothing wrong if I were a beauty guru, but I'm not. <laughs> like, it's yeah. Yeah, it's this like it's this automatic assumption, and it's that you know that they perceive that as less than them. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and it's not like I have problems with beauty gurus. I have problem with someone just immediately dismissing me because of that, and it's not even what I do. Um, and and even, it's the same with books with other parts yeah. of YouTube. <laughs> like, um, like, what do you do? Like, you you do you read books on yeah. camera? Like, do you yeah. just talk about books? What? So like that was a super frustrating thing for like no one to understand and like to constantly feel like I have to be like, no, I do videos about this and like it's really fun and it's not like it's not boring and, and it's like people like it. <laughs> it's just like, um, and it was always like that no matter and I would make like I made some friends, but it was not like like, you know, like you guys. It wasn't like hardcore, like forever friends. It was like you know, like kind of an acquaintance and it's not that and I'm still acquaintances and kind of friends with some of them, but not friends like we're friends. <laughs> like, right, right. Um, so once everyone came along and we like all immediately clicked and had the best time ever, it was so much more fun. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, where were we on our worst con? Kat, you said your worst con? It lost a bit more. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, let's talk about, um, oh, do we have any questions here? What was your favorite? <laughs> um, okay. Tips for cons. Let's do some tips. Um, cons. tips for cons, like definitely for like book con or any con really, if there are things you want to go to, draw yourself a little itinerary because and you have to give yourself like at least an hour between things. If they're back to back, you're not going to make it. So you have to pick and choose your day ahead of time if you really want to hit everything that you want to hit. We were so about this in the early days. Like, we were. Christine straight up made this like itinerary that was like an hour by hour breakdown of like what we were going to be doing. <laughs> Like we were intensely prepared, and it's so funny because that's such a, a, a stark contrast to like the last book con, book, book expo that we went to. Where like we're just like, yeah, we might get a book, or we might just leave the Javits Center all day. It's become like so. Like for us, BEA has almost become a completely different landscape because of how BookTube has evolved, and we get a lot of these arcs in the mail. So it feels kind of you know, it's not as fun to like run after them because we don't want to take them away from other people. And like, we already have, we can get them. So it's kind of like, do we belong there anymore? <laughs> like, yeah. Or are we in the way? Yeah, um, I, got, I got exactly one book from Volker. Yeah, me too, one book. <laughs> and I read it on the plane and it was great. <laughs> um, so yeah, being prepared. I just found my, our like 2015, I took a yeah. picture. It was like three pages long. <laughs> <laughs> it was so yeah. Well, like thought out in detail. I was just like, I was staring at it and I was like, I'm exhausted reading this. Like, how did we plan it? Did we do all this? Like, and I loved it. Like, I just love having it right now because then I'll remember it and I won't have to like feel like I don't know what I'm doing. Um, and that's what you will feel like. It's overwhelming if you go in there without a plan, like completely overwhelming. I was having hot flashes. I went by myself the first year and like, it was like, I don't know where anything was. I don't know what I was doing. I didn't have a schedule. Um, it was a mess. So that's my big tip. What about you? One of you. <laughs> uh, I would say on on top of that, be flexible because mm. some things like don't always go as planned. So you just have to like kind of be willing to go with the flow sometimes. Um, and I feel like if you, you can sometimes get super disappointed if like not everything goes the way you want it to go. So just like be open to like kind of changing things around a little bit. So. Yeah. Kind, of, kind of bouncing on that, 
prioritize your list a little bit. Like if there's one thing that was like going to make or break your experience, if you do or don't get to like attend a certain panel or meet a certain author, cater your event around the thing that is most important to you. Mm -hmm. um, so that you give yourself like the best chance to do it. Um, but my other tip is going to be more of a, like a, a how to like actually survive in the con tip. And that's, you gotta bring some kind of granola bar, some kind of snack. You gotta always have some oh. kind of food or snack in your backpack, your bag, anything. Water is also great. Several <laughs> waters. Yeah, a couple several waters. The thing that has saved my ass at many a convention is my portable phone battery charger. Yeah. I, I got the portable things so like, cause you're on your phone all day. You're waiting in line for three hours at a time for a book. So like you want to be on your phone and also to connect to whoever you're there with, like stay in contact. You got to call Ubers and stuff. Like you need your phone to be charged as much as possible. You need a portable charger battery pack so that you can juice up your phone on the fly. It is vital. <laughs> You also need to like adding on to all of this schedule breaks for yourself to eat. Mm. Like don't do back to back things because a granola bar is not going to sustain you all day. You're with a lot of people. So you want to keep be fed and have your body not running on fumes because that's how you get sick. Mm -hmm. Um, so just you program lunch. I'm always like really hardcore. Like guys, when are we doing lunch? We need lunch. <laughs> <laughs> lunch. <laughs> um, I, that was an issue, like, my first VidCon, I didn't want to go by myself to eat, but, like, no one was leaving to eat because no one wanted to be the person with all the people they don't know to be, like, should we leave to eat? <laughs> like, I was dying. Um, and that first VidCon that I went to, the food was, like, a couple blocks away. Like, it was, like, a 10-minute walk to food because it was just a hotel in the middle of LA. <laughs> um so fun times, program food. And I would say, always bring a backpack to a con. Oh, sure. <laughs> bring a backpack with like a light sweater because it gets cold sometimes in the rooms. Um, I like to have like a notebook so I can jot shit down. <laughs> but um, the, yeah, your backpack will allow you to like, if you get a book, you can put it in the backpack before you find a bag. Like you're gonna get stuff like random swag and you want somewhere to put it. Right. Yeah. And in some conventions, a lot of the swag does tend to be tote bags. Like one of the book expo years I went, I came home with like 12 tote bags. <laughs> um, but it's good to bring something just in case. Like you want you want to be prepared. It's better to be prepared, over prepare. Yeah, have your backpack because that'll hold your granola bars, your two water bottles, like your little jacket, um, and then more if you need it. And then you get a tote bag and it'll make it even easier because you have two bags. Um, I know. Yeah, the tote bag thing is so real. I just moved. I had to throw out like 30 tote bags because I have like 200 million tote bags. I still have a whole closet and Tupperware stuffed with tote bags in tote bags in tote bags. Um, okay, let us see here. Any really weird experiences with a fan at a con? Hmm. <sighs> trying to think. I'm trying to think too. I remember like when I first started having subscribers and as at VidCon, there was like one VidCon where someone like excitedly came up to us and then followed us to lunch off of VidCon and it was kind of just mm -hmm. uncomfortable. That's just like a, a thing in general that like I feel like can be weird because there it's this is like, don't follow people around. <laughs> but it's, it's like an understandable thing too, because like you, you might not know a lot of people and like, these are the people that you feel like, you know, so like yeah. conventions do have a weird thing of surrounding that. Yeah. And there's this weird, like, there's this weird thing when you're like a creator that like you've found someone, like, you talk to someone and like the creator is probably like introverted and like also, you know, <laughs> Uh, and has a hard time with boundaries and like it's just a weird it's a weird thing to deal with in on the spot where yeah uh, yeah i can't really think of like any like super weird or like terrible experience no, it's always like everyone's so nice and it's so nice like you want to meet everybody so it's never like the only weird like that's the only big weird thing that I think that I was ever I felt really uncomfortable because it was a dude and he was like following me and like 
and like we I was out to we were, I was getting lunch with like two other YouTubers. It was like before BookTube, BookTube I think was was there mm-hmm. and like. I, he just like, you know, kept asking me questions and there was like two friends that I just made there and I just felt really uncomfortable. Um, yeah. But yeah, um, I think mean, my sort of weirdest experience with a fan was just kind of having fans in general. Like yeah. again, that first book con that we went to, we weren't expecting anything. We were expecting like maybe a small book to meet up, like something really casual. And then all of a sudden, like, this was my first, one of my first events ever. And all of a sudden there's like people coming up to me, like just putting an arm around me, taking a picture and then leaving and like not even saying words to me. And I'm like, am I that kind of person now? Like, <laughs> like, it was so weird. And I was just like, you don't want to say hi? Like, okay. <laughs> like, you just want to- I don't remember like thinking of Charlie So Cool Like, cause I would go to VidCon and Charlie So Cool Like was like so popular at the time that he would just, people were just like, like right. whatever he was anywhere. And he wouldn't like, he would just be like rotating around taking pictures. And then that's how it was like at that first book con yeah. you know, back, back, just like with hordes of people trying to just like get in, take a picture and leave. And, and like nothing like this had ever happened to us before. Like I didn't, I had never even been recognized at a grocery store or the airport or like even during book expo, the actual like expo event, like I got stopped like maybe by one person who was just like, hey, I like your channel, I want to do a picture. Right. Um, but like the book con experience was completely different. It was wild. Um, yeah, and everyone was so nice. It was just like they, there was no organization for it. And so we weren't prepared and like the people there weren't prepared. And uh, like, it was just like chaos. <laughs> um, but uh, like the last five years have been just really great. Uh, everything's way more organized and like we know what to expect more. And mm-hmm. like, I feel like the weirdest interactions and I don't mind it. Like it's always like in the bathroom when I'm like about to wash my hands and I'm like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I feel so weird. Cause I'm like, just peed. Like it just seems like <laughs> <Like, laughs> Um, but everyone's always so nice and it's mm-hmm. really, really nice. <laughs> um, let's see. Do you guys have a favorite experience or moment that you just stands out to you from any con? Oh, we really should have like thought about this and wrote down answers first. Yeah. Cause all my con memories are blurring together. <laughs> so many good ones. I remember one specific one that like made me cry was when we were in Chicago and like Jesse had left the green room to like go to the bathroom or something. And he went by the line for yeah. our panel and it was like this whole room full of wine. And he was like, you guys have to come out and see this. And like, we went out by the door and everyone like got excited when we came over there. And like, I couldn't believe it. Like I could not believe the amount of people that were there to see us. And it was just so touching. And like when we came out onto that Chicago panel and like, I, it like, makes me tear up thinking about it. Like it was and the support and like the love that you could feel just coming into that room was unlike anything that I've ever experienced. Yeah. That was probably like the biggest turnout we've had. Probably. No, it's not. The room was just bigger at the other really? one. Yeah. 500 people. There's, but the room there's was so much energy in that room though. Yeah. yeah. This was the biggest oh. one at, at that moment. Right? It was the biggest one at the time. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But like then the other room held more people. The next year was like a seven hundred person room, which was mm-hmm. like, yeah, um, yeah. I, I I don't have a lot of experience that stand out like in particular. Um, but the ones that I remember the most are sometimes uh, people when they're coming to meet us, they'll like write a letter beforehand or like draw some kind of like fan art or like do a little a cute little bookmark or something like that, and like give us like get like not expensive like handmade cute yeah. mental kind of gifts like i love those things and they're really nice because like after the hectic moment of like you're meeting people and you're only like face to face with them for like 30 seconds and you might not get enough time to like talk to them and really connect like getting able to like read the letter and like it's just a more of a connection kind of and it just makes it feel more real and it's something to hold on to like i even have i have like art and like bookmarks and like things that people have given me hanging all over my walls. Um, like I have, here, let me show you this cool little thing. Um, like, I think we all got, oh, yeah. mm. this. 
Um, no, I think that was at NerdCon, so it was us. What? Oh, was it NerdCon? Yeah, yeah. I just like we. It's just such cool, like yeah, so cool art. It's such, it's so nice. Yeah. yeah. No, I just remembered like at the peculiar event we got those. We got like really nice. I feel like so many nice fan encounders. Yeah, I, I, I got someone brought me a bag of coffee for, at the Miss Peregrine one. And I feel like I got a coffee mug that time as well. Like, it's just really sweet things. That was such a cool event. And then we had like the best photo shoot ever. That was great. Yeah. That wasn't even a convention or a festival. You that know. Was exciting, but it was just an awesome event. Yeah. Jesse, what was your favorite moment? I think just a standout general and moment is when people like come up to us and tell us how like meaningful our videos have been in their lives. And like how, like, like we get people telling us that like it's helped them through moments of like depression and things like that. We've had moms come up to us and be like, you know, my child's been going through this like rough path patch in life. And like your videos have just been like such an uplifting thing for them. And, like I never ever get tired of hearing that. Like that always yeah. means so much. And like, it's so encouraging to like keep doing what we're doing. Yeah. So, especially yeah. the ones from the parents. Um, yeah. And especially when they'll like thank us. They're like, thank you for like being good role models and for like, you know, making good content for our kids. Like, and, and we're like, uh, like I, one time when someone said it to me, I was like, I don't exactly make wholesome content. Like, <laughs> I swear a lot. And the mom was just like, oh, we don't care about that. Like, you're <laughs> encouraging them to read. Like, that's what matters. And I was like, okay, good, because I swear a lot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, when the moms, they get really sentimental and I was like, get teary because yeah. they're, they're saying it. they're so kind and it's so nice to know that like something that you're doing is having an, a positive impact on someone who's going through something hard. Um, yeah, I remember like I just went to Texas Teen Book Festival last year and on my way back up to my hotel room, a girl stopped me and just like told me this whole story about how she was going through like a really dark time with an eating disorder and like how my videos were like, you know, the only thing that was like making her happy. And it was just like a really emotional moment for her. And like to just to hear it, it just blew me away. And it was just, it's so encouraging to like, just like, just to want to keep doing making things because you know that it's having this sort of impact on people. Wow. And especially like seeing that real world impact, like we put up videos on YouTube and sometimes it can feel just like throwing it out into the void. Like, does this even matter to anyone? Um, I feel like that's a very common thing that people can feel about their content. Like why even bother making content? Like someone else has the same opinion. Like, do you really need to hear my opinion on a book if someone else has an opinion? And it's like, you don't realize how much that content can mean to someone. Um, and to like hear how much it means to someone is so validating and so rewarding. It's like, okay, I'll keep making videos for like the one person who like yeah. really needs them and really connects with them. And it, it just, it, it's the human connection beyond the screen, which is just right. so yeah. Yeah. I, do you guys remember when we met Emma books? Um, yeah. <laughs> I have a picture of our first picture together. <laughs> yeah, and that really stands out because you're like so passionate and so kind about our videos and stuff. And we talked to her for a long time and I was like, wow, she's so cool. And then <laughs> it was really yeah, cool. were, she, she wasn't making videos at this time. Yeah. It was at the first book con that we met her. Like she was so nice. She like stopped us by the food court and was, yes. she, was she was so nice. I'm like, now look at her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I remember like Kat and I met Jenna Claire at the um, theater Chicago. in Chicago and she was yeah. so sweet. <laughs> um it, it, it's so fun to like meet people and then they become like closer friends of ours like over the years of like going to more conventions together. Like it's just it's such a unique thing in the age of like YouTube and conventions and everything. Right. Yeah, like we've been around for so long that we've seen so many people like start out and like, you know, build their channels and it's really There was one um we went to a dinner, it might have been last year or the year before. We went to dinner with like a couple other like a bunch of other booktubers. There's like maybe twelve of us at the table. And at one point we like went around talking about like why we started our channel and stuff. And like a bunch of the other booktubers that we were at the table with were like, yeah, I started my video. Like your guys' videos were the first ones that we saw. And we were like, wow, like that's so cool and wild. Yeah. 
<laughs> I remember feeling so old in oh, yeah. that conversation. And we were going around and everyone, it was like the same thing that happened at Texas Teen Book Fest when everyone was talking about how long they've been doing it, like when they started. Everyone had started in like the last two years, except for like the four of us, like us and Natasha and like a couple other people. I was like, oh my gosh, I'm ancient. Yeah, it is wild to see how much BookTube has grown in the last few years because like we've been doing this for nine years now. <laughs> uh, like we've been doing Booksplosion for six years and we were all doing BookTube right. before. So like it's been, a, it's been a long time. It's been a journey. <laughs> um, were any of you ever worried that you wouldn't connect before you all met up? I mean, yeah. I think everyone's always worried, <laughs> but like, it was so easy. Like that was what yeah. it was so nice about it. There was mm, like everyone instantly had so much to talk about. Yeah. <laughs> um, let's see. And the thing is, we are really lucky being in the booktube community yeah. because like every everyone's really nice. Like yeah. it, it's th there are other communities where like it, they're not as nice, and like not obviously not everyone in booktube like gets along perfectly. It's not like an ideal like Eden place but like it's just in, in general like everyone is really nice and supportive and it's, it's just it's been great yeah. yeah I feel like one of the things like that we had kind of when we first met was that the book two community was so small yeah. that like we only really had and knew each other in in a way where like I don't know we bonded so closely so quickly because there wasn't an overwhelming amount of people you yeah. know, there was like only like what sixteen of us or something, and um, in situations like that, it's easy to get to know a lot of people pretty well. And when you go in, it's just harder when you're, it's like all of YouTube, and it's like, oh, I don't really know where I belong here yet, and yeah. who I can really click with. Um, but now, I mean, like if you go to any book convention, you're gonna find book people that you're gonna click with. Like it's just everyone's really passionate to have gone out of their way to go to a convention about books. Cat, um, any updates on your book? <laughs> Quickly before we get back to cons. Um, uh, I'll do a video update soon. <laughs> cool. Okay. <laughs> Do you know, is any of you guys have a con mishap story that you feel like? I feel like I talked about my first vid con with not, no eating and that was terrible. Do you guys have anything that sticks out as something you did wrong? Oh, something I did wrong? Yeah. Mm. Book your hotel ages ahead of time. I'm talking like a year out or you're not going to get a hotel close to the con and you won't be able to walk and it will suck. <laughs> Uh, something that I regret every year, but I keep doing is um not wearing comfortable shoes. <laughs> oh, <my> God. <laughs> oh, man. That's really important for any con because you're going to be walking, you're going to be on your feet all day. And we dress up a lot because we're doing all sorts of events. And like Kat and I will be in heels. And like by the end of the day, if those heels have not been worn for a long period of time before this, like you will be dying. Mm -hmm. So break in your shoes beforehand too. A lot of times you'll get like new shoes for an outfit that you'll be wearing. It's not a good idea to wear them the first time at a con. No. I feel like maybe my mishap is just not getting enough sleep. Uh, yeah, that's hard. Like yeah. you want to hang out with your friends, you want to go to like the parties and stuff, and it's like, yeah. You know what was a great con? The I think it was 2015. Was it 2015 when we rented that car and like Cat drove? Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. Was that 2014? I thought it was 2014. It was we were moving. That was 2014. It was 2014. Yeah. yeah. It was the first car I ever rented. I was 25, so <laughs> I could rent a car. We had like the windows down. We were like obnoxiously singing as we yeah. went. It was really fun. It was a, that was a good time. It was at the end of VidCon. We ended up driving to like a VidCon party at the YouTube party at the YouTube. Yeah. Place. Yeah, and we, we got like in and out, and yeah, we mustaches on each other. It was like a whole Pierre thing. I mean, it was very fun, but for the record, I was extremely anxious and stressed to be driving. Like, not only was it a big ass expensive rental car in Los Angeles, but I had fucking eight rowdy booktubers in the back. Like, <laughs> you know, it, I mean, it was fun, but like, 
<laughs> Maybe I don't recommend that. <laughs> Someone just said cat's older than 25. <laughs> <laughs> She's a vampire. It's fine. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> We're all older than 25. <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm not. I'm 19 forever. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I'm i significantly older than 25. Kat was 25 when I met her. Ah, shut up! <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a lie. That was a lie. I met you the year before. Yeah, yeah. I think I was a little bit younger. But, um, I, yeah, I didn't, I, just, I didn't even start YouTube until I was, like, 23, so. I turned 32 last month. I'm very old. <laughs> Um, so it's that I missed Kat's car vlogs when she went to Starbucks. That was like when we moved. Yeah, that was like, that was 2015. That was like yeah. in Los Angeles. Yeah. Um, someone asked, are we going to have a panel at BookCon? As long as BookCon goes off unhinged, um, mm -hmm. we will have a panel on Saturday at yeah. BookCon. Um, so yeah. excited, but a little we'll scared. See. We'll see about this virus if it clears up. Yeah. That's the thing. I, like I saw someone earlier asked, um, like, do you think BookCon might get canceled? And we, I don't, I, I don't think so. I hope not. I, the thing is, it's so unknown that we just have to wait and see. Yeah. I mean, like, I feel like there is a big chance since it feels like everything's being put on hold right now. Coachella was just put on hold. Yeah. Right? Coachella was put on hold. Y'all West was canceled this year. Um, yeah, the SWSX South. Yeah, they've never canceled before and they canceled this year. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, it's all about keeping more people safe because, I mean, even though it can be really mild for young people, they can spread it to older people and it can be really dangerous. So we need to... I feel like the healthcare system can't handle that yeah. many people at the same time. Yeah, we need to, like, slow down so that they can become more prepared. Mm -hmm. um, so... Who knows? The future is a black hole. <laughs> but we're hoping it still happens. It's, yeah. it's when the weather starts warming up more. So, like, there's a chance it could still happen. We'll, we'll see. Yeah. Yes. Um, let's see our show notes here. Okay. Um, okay. Cosplaying at cons. How do we feel about this? I'm all for it. I love it. Um, I don't do it myself a ton at like, like book con and stuff like that, because like, I want to dress up and I never get an excuse to like wear a dress and like look pretty mm -hmm. like, like doing that. But, um, I love it when people cosplay, like I've seen some amazing cosplays at book expo and book con, like people in like great, uh, like bookish cosplays. Um, I'm all for it. I, I say do it if you want to. Yeah, I'm all I mean, for it. Oh, sorry. No, go ahead, Jesse. I was just gonna say I'm all for it too. I've just never planned my own. Natasha's just always planned mine for me. All right. <laughs> One of these days, I'll do my own cosplay. It'll be great. <laughs> Natasha's just really good at finding the right stuff oh, to yeah. make it look like yeah. a certain character. Um, and I, you know, I like when I'm all dressed up and stuff, but. Um, and like for VidCon, we we come really prepared and go straight to the cosplay event. But for Comic Con, if it's like it's gonna, it's such a long day and it's so hot that sometimes, like, if your costume is at all uncomfortable, you will be dying by like halfway through the day. Um, I remember the first time I even kind of cosplayed. Natasha also planned this. It was like Disney princesses meet Hogwarts houses, and I thought it was gonna be so easy, but this stupid crown on my head gave me like the worst headache by like halfway through the day and then like i was like i'm never doing this again i'm sweating i'm dying the next year <laughs> and i'm like in full dolores costume which was i liked dolores better but of course i got the night before i put it on it didn't fit right and tasha had to like sew it for me i'm like hot and Natasha did my hair and like <laughs> I'm not good at it by myself. And Natasha's just a genius with the cosplay planning and organizing and like knowing how to do it. So we've been lucky to have like her input on a lot yeah. of our things. So when really Kat and I did um Klexa, we mm -hmm. like did a practice round the day before, which was yeah. really cool. <laughs> we got our hair and makeup down. Yeah, we needed to test everything out and also film a music video because you have to do that. <laughs> um, I do remember we had to um, 
Jesse and Maureen were flying in that night. So like we had to go pick them up in our hair and makeup. And then we went to the Cheesecake Factory. Like we changed our outfits, but we still had the makeup on. So yeah. fun. Good times. Good times. Um, and then of course this past year we did uh not this past year, God, it was 2018 when we did a uh, Fantastic Beast. But I yeah. feel like it was such a successful cosplay on our part. We looked so good as a whole. Uh, I put that outfit together on my own. I forgot about oh, that. Nice. You did a really good job. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> like, that picture that we have of the three of us is so excellent. It's on my wall. It's right there. Oh, on my wall, too. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> that was also a really fun adventure of um, bearding Christine. <laughs> it was a whole thing. <laughs> if you're going to do a beard, you're not going to be able to eat. So just know that ahead of time. And also removing it later is going to be an experience. <laughs> and disgusting. I'll have it all on video that no one ever saw if you want to watch it. Yeah, yeah, like I it. love that video. That is hilarious. And like the whole behind the scenes of your beard. I <laughs> love that video too. And I was like, why doesn't anyone want to watch this? I like, I'd love to watch this happening to somebody. <laughs> like, you know what I think is criminally underrated is, uh, is your guys' convention vlogs. I agree. Like, they're always so good and so fun, and they don't get as many views as like book halls or TBRs or whatever. But like, I mean, even Christy, the, the NerdCon video was fantastic because it also oh, had a La La Land moment. <laughs> <laughs> and that was amazing. <laughs> um, but yeah, my favorite, like looking back on those VidCon vlogs, they're so fun, like the last two, but um like they don't do as well and then like you have to put so much time into them and then like after a while it's like <laughs> yeah i love that like uh god jesse that one um video where we did the dance of the water bottles oh my gosh i love, <laughs> oh my oh Lord. I love going back to those blogs um <laughs> And like, I love to like doing the BEA book con vlogs, but like, I feel like it's kind of a thing of the past, the way like things are shifting with the cons. Yeah. Um, it's like hard for us to collab now too, when we do cons. Yeah. Wow. It's like, we're just like more grown up now and have more yeah. responsibilities and like can't spend as much time not being at our jobs and in our own separate lives. And it's yeah. like, it's I, like I get fatigued so much easier now. Like, I don't know where, who I was five years ago to have all that energy to like, <laughs> yeah. Like, and like we used to say it at moms, and it's like I can't put all that pressure on her now, like to have like five adults in the house, <laughs> like being loud and like in the way. Right. <laughs> um, so we do yeah, it's not just like, oh yeah, my daughter and her friends. It's like, yeah, my my 20 something year old daughter and her adult friends. <laughs> <laughs> Who are still loud and obnoxious. Yeah. But it's fine because we still get to act like kids. Yeah. <laughs> like poor Paul. Like my brother was like still in like school and we'd be up like right next to his room, like cackling and like talking. <laughs> and now anytime he has a friend over, I'm like, I can't stand it. <laughs> in bed at a reasonable hour and they're up till like 4 a.m. And I'm just like, what is your life? This is so annoying. Was this what it was like? <laughs> Oh, Chrissy, your mom is watching. Hi, Linda. <laughs> we miss you, Linda. <laughs> Thank you for taking care of us when we visit. <laughs> um, but anyway, let's see. What were we talking about? Where, where did this we quarantine at Linda's? Can we make that happen? <laughs> quarantine. <laughs> like, um, let me see. Okay, cosplaying. Oh yeah, we're talking about cosplaying. What has been your favorite cosplay at a con that you did? Oh. Whenever I do a good con in cosplay, everyone's looking at us like we're insane. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Oh god, the, when we were when I was walking through the parking lot and my whole Manon get up, I had like this huge ass cape wow. on and this long blonde wig. It's like 98 degrees. <laughs> That also was a great con. I mean, the great uh, cosplay when we yeah, did. Yeah, I liked that one too. Uh, I don't. I, I think the the Lexa the hundred one was probably my favorite cosplay, just because like I feel like I did a really good job like getting the look right. It was funny <laughs> makeup and hair. Felt really badass in that. Cosplay. Yeah, yeah. I thought I was like ready to fight, like apocalypse. Bring it on. <laughs> 
I don't know if this cosplay counts, but the peculiar po cosplay. <laughs> Maybe it was really a cosplay. It was just like old timey clothes, but oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, it was a, it was a, it was a really fun one though. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's still, it's still dressed up. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, and we got to go to like Atlanta, and that was cool. Yeah. Um, but did we all say one? Oh, yeah. did I not do one? Yeah. Um, yeah. I like so many of them. I I want to say, I don't know. <laughs> I felt an answer, so I felt really cool in the Dumbledore one. Like that, each of them had po pros and cons. Like the Dumbledore one was amazing, but I could not eat, and it was definitely <laughs> and it was really hard. And Natasha had to put in so much work. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um. But and then like Feyre was also really cool. Um, and that was like easier to wear, and Dolores was the easiest to wear. So I was trying to pull up a photo reference for the peoples to see. Oh, yeah. Peculiar cosplay. Yeah, that one. Yeah. That was a cool photo shoot. <laughs> yeah, so um, let's see. Is there any other questions that are burning that you oh. guys would like us to answer before we do? I, our what, Jesse? Out of one, like, what's like your most fun memory of a like an event that we've been been to like funny moment inside yeah. joke maybe i have a, i have a little one okay. um it, i don't remember what year of y'all fest it was but the year when we all bought the ridiculous y'all fest pants was, was it the first one and then we just had we just had, we had like a fun silly time like modeling our new ridiculous y'all fest pants <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I I always love Y'all Fest when we're all there and doing our like random shit. Like our reputation year was so oh, much. That was fun. Good. Yeah, like and then Kat and I did like the Taylor Swift dance in like their bookstore. Bookstores. <laughs> <laughs> um, and like we we listened to Reputation together and just like we're up just talking and laughing like into the night. There's just one year we got there and like maybe we'll see. We were we all took like pictures of our faces in the dark with a flash, and I put them all into one picture, and it was so funny. That was, that was really weird. I remember that. There's been like several years at Y'all Fest where like the lights go out and we just like start laughing at nonsense, <laughs> like just nothing. We're just, just like all of a sudden we're like like middle schoolers at a sleepover. <laughs> it's so fun. We did. We had one year where we had like it was like a legit like a slumber party, and we just stayed up all night like just talking about like things that were going on with us. Yeah. Like, it was fun. I think it, it, it was right when you and John first started dating. Yeah. Maybe that was your, yeah. yeah. We were all like starting to talk to people and like kind of be in relationships. We had like yeah, yeah. We were all bonding over that. Yeah. I remember I was like texting John, like telling you guys what I was texting. Yeah. <laughs> Is it okay? <laughs> <laughs> editing your graphs <laughs> <laughs> um yeah that was really fun yeah. um, I, the thing about all these cons are like it doesn't matter how old you are like when you're with your friends and you're traveling like this like you revert back to like a teenager like a kid yeah. it's like cause you're like yeah with your friends and you can just be silly and weird and it's it's a good time mm -hmm. Yeah, and like all of our, I just like always love our Yelp Fest panels, like our Yelp Fest meetups. Yeah, they're always really fun. I like, I'll always remember that year, the Hamilton year. Oh, where we got the rap. <laughs> where we got what? We did the rap battle. <laughs> oh, we did. I don't. I remember it was so funny. Whatever, like the trivia we were doing was like hysterical. Yeah. And I think we were talking about Carry On a lot. Like there was just oh, like, yeah, I remember that. <laughs> really fun conversation during that panel. Um, and then the year before that, we did trivia, and I remember it being like so intense. And Jesse was like the moderator. <laughs> um, yeah, um, was so many fun memories at Y'all Fest. Yeah. I love Y'all Fest as a convention so much, but I hate the travel to get there so much. <laughs> like Charleston is so far away, and you can't get a direct flight there from like hardly anywhere. So y'all, y'all fest travel is not fun, but y'all fest is a great convention. I like this question. If you can invite one character to a con, who would it be? I think I would invite Will Herndale, and I would like 
Like he would be amazed by everything because he's not from this time and it would be so funny. <laughs> no one else knows. So Maybe, I, feel, I feel like Magnus would just be fun. To he have. would be fun. He would like mess with stuff. Yeah, exactly. I feel like I would want to go with Hermione. Yeah. <laughs> she would have a plan and a time turner. It would be a great There event. we go. <laughs> You're thinking about how to get the maximum like contact yeah. for your con. We're gonna do this con right. Like, <laughs> I'm like, what's the maximum like weird experience? <laughs> Um, have you guys met any celebrities at a con? I feel like I've met a bunch of celebrities like very quickly at cons. Chad Michael Murray. Oh my God. That was like a legitimate meet. <laughs> I'm trying to think, I mean, do authors count as celebrities? Cause like I've met a lot of author celebrities. Well, only like John Green. Well, well I, 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 I thought I have met him. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, I, I mean, like, um, I met Jenna Marbles at, like, VidCon. I met John Green at a VidCon, and I said nothing. Uh, it was very awkward. I met, like, oh, I met BJ from um, The Office. I remember that. You had to take it from my phone because your phone wasn't working. Yeah, I got, like, a selfie with him, and I was, like, so panicked. And it was, like, the classic, like, oh, my phone wasn't working. <laughs> um, I met uh, also from The Office. Oh, my God. Daryl? Yeah, the guy who plays piano, um, who works uh, downstairs in the first season. Um, I met him in the uh, foyer of like the Hyatt <laughs> at Comic-Con. And then we, after we got a picture together, we went to, he got on the same elevator as me and I felt so awkward. <laughs> um, I can't think of anybody else. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, one time you met, um, Lauren on the streets of New York. Yeah. But that like wasn't at like we weren't at the conference. It was just like in New York. <laughs> There's a lot around. I remember like Mindy Kaling was like three feet away doing like a book con signing and I was just like trying to get shots of her in my blog. Um there's so many just randomly at book on like you like every year there's just like a random celebrity that you're like what are you doing here Kate from Lost Evangeline Lily was there last year and I missed it. I'm so upset about it. Um, okay, so I think that we're gonna start wrapping things up, but it's time to pick a winner for the two tickets to BookCon in New York. Um, so 65 people are watching. What do we want them to put in the chat to like pick a winner? Well, if you figure something out, I wanna tell them a couple rules and things about it. Okay, you tell them rules, I'll think of this. So we're giving away two tickets to BookCon. It's um, travel and accommodations are not included. So it's just the tickets to the event. You do have to uh, either be in New York or find a way to arrange travel yourself to get there. Um, you have to be at least 13 years old with parental permission um, to give away information, your information online. That's like a ch the Child Privacy Act thing. Um, I think those are the only rules. Yeah, um, I think, yeah, I, I think if you're from Canada, you can um, win the tickets, but you you still have to find your own way to get to New York and stuff. Yeah. So. Okay, so what do you guys think of doing a book explosion trivia question to win this two tickets? Too hard? Sure. Whatever, whatever you want to do, Christy. Yeah. Or we could choose a number between one and a hundred, and whoever says the number first. Oh, that's kind of fun. <laughs> maybe, maybe choose a number in our show notes page, and then. Okay. I'm gonna down a number. I'm gonna do it between one and two hundred. So if you want to go ahead and start putting your number. Wait, wait, wait till I write a number down. Okay. okay, okay. Hold on. And please, please enter only if you are actually going to like use these tickets. If you actually are going to be able to go to BookCon. Because um, we wouldn't want them to be like wasted or anything. Okay. Um, let me think. 
Okay. Do you guys see the number? Yep. Okay. Here we go. Go for it if you want to win the tickets. <laughs> no one's gonna enter. And then <laughs> Well, if we if we don't get anyone who gets it within like a minute, we'll just choose who's closest. Yeah. <laughs> Two people pick twenty-two at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I see the closest right now. Oh, I see a close one too. Yeah. Somebody's close. Ah! <laughs> okay. Let's like do twenty more seconds. Okay. Okay. Twenty more seconds to enter. No one has gotten it exact yet. Oh, someone got it. Jessica Glenn. Oh, oh, Jessica oh. Gibb. It's a good game. That's a good game. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you all for playing. <laughs> how, how are we going to get her information? Okay. So, Jessica, can you, to emails are awesome at gmail.com, send us your full name and email? Yeah, we will put you on the will call list um, at BookCon. So, like, when you show up and you'll give them your, your name and they'll give you tickets. But um, yeah, congratulations. Congratulations. Hopefully we'll see you there and not the world won't be canceled. <laughs> um, we also, we contacted the win. Um, we had giveaways also on Instagram and Twitter, and we've contacted those winners as well. Um, the Twitter winner has gotten back to me, so congratulations to the Twitter winner. Um, and the Instagram winner, have, have they gotten back to you, Jesse? I don't think so. I've not. Okay. Well, we'll we'll keep updated on that. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Thank you all so much for joining us for this live show. It was so fun. We're going to be doing our chain of gold live show on the twenty eighth of March, and then we're going to be reading the June Boys by Court Stevens in April. And that live show will be what did we say for that? May third. May third. Okay. Cool. Very excited. We've. I don't, am I the only one who's finished Chain of Gold? Have you guys finished? I haven't started. Okay, no one else has started. I've finished and I'm working on my book talk. It's coming. <laughs> um, thank you all for watching. I'm Christine. I'm Kat. I'm Jesse. We're Book Explosion. See you soon. Bye. Bye. Bye.